Yeah? Louder. Louder. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> why do we use refinement types? So basically we use refinement types to encode semantic properties, properties that right now the Haskell type system does not uh, kind of track, but the, the, the programmers still care about these properties, so, but th they're not uh, easy to reason with. So how do we encode the properties right now? We usually we use comments to encode these properties. So for example, here I define a binary search tree, and I use a comment to specify that uh, my left subtree has keys that are less than the, the current key, and my right subtree has key that are greater than my current key. So what I see is that in the future, we will use refinement types to encode all these kinds of uh, semantic properties instead of comments. So here is, again, my binary search tree example. And basically, inside the types, I have packed all the comments. And in my definition, I say that the left subtree is basically a tree whose keys are less uh, than the current key. So this comment just came as a refinement of my Haskell data definition. So, okay, so this is how I see the future of refinement types in Haskell. To, instead of having comments to define all these semantic properties, just put them <coughs> into my, my type system. And to do this, we should do specification and verification of these kinds of properties. So, okay, so yeah, I have my code. I want that the code want, uh, I, I want the code to specify certain invariants, but the problem is that I have to propagate all these invariants around my code. So coming up with the appropriate specification is not always good, uh, always easy. And apparently there was a nice paper at this ICFP on how to use machine learning techniques uh, to learning the appropriate refinement types that you want. So, okay, so we came up with a specification and the next step is to write the specification down. And th this step is important because I know that the Haskell user doesn't want to learn another language to write the specification. So what I see in the future is just to use Haskell to write your specification in Haskell. And to do so, we need to integrate with uh, the compiler, or I, I guess, uh, yeah. We, we need some integration with the JT compiler. So we came up with the specifications, and we wrote them down. And the next step is to verify these specifications. And so it turns out that verification can be automatic if we use the, the tools that SMT solvers can provide us. Uh, but still, we need to spend a lot of time in verification because you just built on top of an existing, uh, so you already spent a lot of time uh, for type checking and you need to spend a lot more time uh, to verify the specifications. So our perspective is that uh, the specification should be optional. So if you're working before a deadline, you can say, okay, I'm going to, to do the verification like later. And to do this, uh, my code should not depend on the specification. So I need to be able to run my code uh, without uh, crucially, so, yeah, I need to decouple my code from my specification. And okay. And I think one of the uh, most uh, difficult problems is how do you explain the error? So if your verification failed, uh, you have to explain the error to a user who is not much into verification, so knows the minimum amount, uh, the minimum things that you need to do that. And this is a very interesting problem. Uh, there, is, there is a lot of work in explaining like error reporting. So, um, uh, Eric uh, used the target that is a testing tool that gives you counter example or that helps you understand the specific uh, the, why your verification failed and also there is a nice paper uh, that uses abductive reasoning so that the user and the tool interact together so that uh, uh, to understand why verification failed so this is how I see the future of refinement types in Haskell and which you use refinement types instead of comments to express all the semantic properties that you want your, your code to have. And specification should happen inside the Haskell language 
and also verification should be automatic. And thanks. So our next speaker is Richard Eisenberg. We'll be talking about uh, the future of dependent types in Haskell. Yes, no. Yes. Well, okay, great. 